Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 4, Episode 22. Trade Oh good, more official royal duties for Princess Twilight Sparkle. You don't get enough of those. I mean, really, she's a princess. I know we have three others, but all the rest of the three are, oh, I don't know, doing royal duties in Canterlot and the Crystal Empire. Yeah, and two of them are kind of involved with um, controlling day and night. That's kind of important. Also, a nice touch on showing how Applejack actually puts on the straps for her cart. Mm -hmm. We've never actually seen that before, I don't think. And isn't this festival kind of a retcon in a way? In a way, yes, because it's never been mentioned before. And no pony of the main six went to it last time, but Princess Cadence was the princess in residence. Well, the location is also kind of a retcon itself. <laughs> we've seen it before in other episodes of the season, but before this season, I don't think we've ever really heard of Rainbow Falls. Oh, I thought it was just a reference back to episode 10. <laughs> Please tell me I have the right episode. <laughs> I have no idea. And there, there's been so many episodes, and I've done so many drawings that I've kind of lost track at this point. I have to look at the number online, and go, oh yeah, this is episode this number for this week, gotcha. It's nice, once again, that the story actually requires Twilight to be recognized as a princess. Yes, it is, and that's kind of how things should have been in Manhattan. Minus the welcome banner and the confetti, because no pony knew she was going to Manhattan. But she's, she's a princess. You know, there aren't alicorns around just anywhere. It's kind of nice that apparently Spike has become an avid comic book collector between this episode and the first episode we've seen him with comic books, which was this season as well. Which is really funny considering in the Power Ponies episode, he rolled up the comic! <laughs> yes, comic lovers are when we went, No! You heathen! <laughs> well, apparently he's learned better now. And I guess Twilight signs a lot of photographs with the way she reacted with, Ugh! Oh, I'm thinking... Every pony at the trade fair asked, but that doesn't really seem fair. It's a trade fair. It sh shouldn't it have been a trade? <laughs> well, she traded her time to sign the picture. And there's a lot of nice little background touches in this episode. I mean, there was even a reference to Bioshock Infinite, a game I'm playing right now. The creator of Bioshock even said online that, oh, that's a nice touch. He even had a screenshot of it. <laughs> and I like the fact that we're finding out more about how Princess... Celestia and Twilight are still interacting even after she's become a princess. And it's also kind of a point back to the fact that Twilight went, is there a book for this? When she's talking about all her books and how she has been getting more from Celestia. Mm -hmm. And isn't having a lucky horseshoe kind of like having a lucky shoe for a human? I would think so. Though we never really seem to see anyone actually wearing horseshoes. That's a good point. We have the pony from Scootaloo's Nightmare from the scary story who's looking for a rusty horseshoe and in the end of the nightmare sequence when she takes it she stamps her hoof on it to put it on but you don't really notice any pony wearing them. I mean you don't even see Rarity include them in her dress ensembles. I guess it's probably because it's too much trouble to draw them on Ivory Pony. It's an extra thing to add to the flash animation. Yep, yeah, but it could just be her lucky horseshoe from when she and Applejack play horseshoes that has been established as a game. I don't know about you, but I saw the whole rarity AJ problem from the start. Yeah, as soon as they both were looking in the same category of vintage, this is going to be a problem. Then let's pull our stuff. Ooh, bigger problem. I also like the touch that Pegasi are using their wings more for, you know, more like hand stuff, like the waving that Rainbow Dash did as she was walking away. Nice job, Rarity, on breaking that poor vendor's stuff by tossing the pie plate back into a pile. Really? I know, that was rather rude. And then when they were mixing up the two brooches, I thought we were going to have another subplot of she actually took the wrong one and the vendor could tell the difference. Yeah, they didn't quite make it clear enough to the audience, in my opinion, of, okay, which one's which? They didn't make it clear. Make it clear for the love of God. It's going to eat me through the rest of the episode now. Also, did you notice that we only ever saw her pendant being on her bag when it was needed to be pointed out? If you look at the frames and shots before that, you can't see it at all, even though it should be clearly visible. Didn't AJ have to move Rarity's you know, wasn't Rarity's mane covering it? In that one shot. And the mane is hair, so moves, so yes, it should have been visible more often, but... 
Now in all previous shots, you actually see all of the bag clearly. Her hair is never blocking it. It's only blocking it in that one shot where AJ has to move it. So it's like Twilight's wings. They're only visible when needed. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. And wow, Bon Bon is like in every background shot. She is like the <laughs> ultimate of background ponies. I hear being an extra can pay well. <laughs> also, fetch quest. I know. First I want to say Rainbow Dash. You only brought one thing to trade? One? Yeah, and it's only valuable to you. You should have brought something that you don't like that much that could have been valuable to someone else. Because that's the essence of trading. But it was like, oh my god, fetch quest. Get that pony a green hat. <laughs> Uh, as long as Fluttershy doesn't go, hey, listen! I was kind of waiting for that. I kind of wanted it. <laughs> Even though Navi wasn't in Link's Awakening, I still wanted it. I know there's all sorts of fetch quests, but that's the trading quest that stands out to me as being most similar to this one. And I guess Discord is now famous enough to have his own lamp collection? Eh, it's probably his fault. Or his idea, I should say. Yeah. Because, you know, he is free now, and just because he's usually staying in Canterlot doesn't mean he's always staying in Canterlot. And who knows where the traitor was from? You know, this could have been something that happened in Canterlot. I just want to know who would want those. I like how once again we're showing more variety in the ponies. And now that we're actually showing ponies with disabilities as well. I think that probably has something to do with the whole fallout over Derpy that... They're like, oh, maybe we should be more sensitive. Um, duh. But I really like the wheelchair design. It's very nicely done. Kind of steampunkish in a way. Oh, and that OC was a fulfillment of a Make-A-Wish request. Oh, that explains why it's so detailed and well done. And now on to the fact that Rainbow Dash has to inhale to spit out her entire fetch quest to the vendor. Yeah, but I think she left off the book at the very end. I don't think she needed to say that, but yeah. No, but if you're going to recite the entire quest, recite the entire quest. Not the point I was going for, but sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, you were going for the fact that it's so long, you have to go, <gasps> Okay, I need this to get this, to trade this for this, and then this. <laughs> you know, unless I want a broken crystal glass, I wouldn't trade with her ever again. Because <laughs> the moment she touched it, the thing broke, so I'm like, yeah, that's not high quality. <laughs> no, that that wasn't good. and then. You know, all the work they spent putting it back together. And then the statue guy just smashes it. It's like, wait, we, we could have just brought you broken glass? But you asked for a goblet. That reminds me of something that I've seen in another cartoon somewhere, but I can't remember what. And don't you think Pinkie Pie is going a little overboard with this whole thing of, these books are important! A little? You can't trade for a single broken feather or quill? And scaring that poor little filly. <laughs> I know. You know, if Twilight's willing to make the trade, then it shouldn't matter. She doesn't need a broken quill, but being able to share books with someone young who would get enjoyment out of them has value to her. It's almost like she's channeling Flim and Flam, when she starts telling, these are how much the books are worth, this is where she got them from, this is why they're important. Princess, princess, did I mention princess? <laughs> and then the only one she talks into wanting the books is Twilight. <laughs> Which kind of works out well in the end. Except for where is she going to store them? She said the library was over full. You know, Rainbow Dash should have just asked Fluttershy to go and ask the guy what type of chicken he wanted instead of going off herself because she knows Fluttershy wouldn't be able to tell people off not to be able to buy something. Yeah, but at the same time, Rainbow Dash is a much faster flyer. She probably could have gotten there and back much more quickly than Fluttershy. But Rainbow Dash would have no problem scaring off the other customers. <laughs> Which could have made the guy not willing to trade with them anymore. Because it's a given of the fetch quest that something is going to break down somewhere along the line. Ah, oh, and we also get the, no, I'm the better best friend bit. I like the fact that Fluttershy is flying back and forth in the background during those two's argument. Yes. It's like, no, I refuse to let you be a better friend than me. I am more generous. <laughs> and you know that... The way Pinky says that she knows that Twilight isn't better than anyone else almost comes off as an insult to me. Yeah, almost. I know she didn't mean it that way. She meant it more of, you know, all ponies are created equal type of thing. Or I get what you're saying. But then she turns right around and goes, princess, princess, princess. Like, Pinky, shut it. 
Also, the stallion in the wheelchair has some type of constitution to be able to resist Fluttershy being cute. I mean, really. I know. That or the stomach can override the heart. <laughs> yeah, he was just that hungry. I loved how Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash just jumped in and took over the burger stand. Yeah, I wonder if that guy is angry or paid them for helping out. They probably didn't stay long enough to find out either way, because they would have stopped the second that, that one stallion got his order. Mm. And that bear call definitely came in handy. <laughs> also, or patience and a slobber mop is the way to train wild animals? Really? <laughs> I don't know that a two-headed dog was necessarily wild. I thought it was just the exotic animal tent. You have to admit a phoenix is a very exotic pet, but Celestia has one. Mm. And an owl would be considered an exotic pet, and Twilight has one. It's kind of interesting how a Fluttershy is kind of being a passive-aggressive of, I really don't want to do this. Oh, wait. That's kind of the definition of Fluttershy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Fluttershy was doing the whole generosity thing of... I can see how much this means to you, so even though I want don't want to, I'll go along with it. Because she doesn't want to be away from Ponyville that long. But she sees how excited Rainbow Dash is. Once again, we show that Rainbow Dash does have her weaknesses. And she shows that she is a three-dimensional character by getting all caught up and then, uh-oh, shoot, what did I do? <laughs> At least she makes up for her mistakes. Yes. It's like, oh, wait, I got too caught up in winning. Oops. Um, undo? Vendor, no trade backs. Oh, I just sold my friend into slavery! <laughs> For a book. Nobody's going to believe this. I have to go talk to Twilight now. Because <laughs> it was also a given, since they said at the beginning of the episode that no princess has ever had to settle a dispute, that we'd mm -hmm. have to have a dispute. It's nice how it was wrapped up so quickly, too, because you know, I, was looking, I was looking at the time going, uh-oh. <laughs> well, Rainbow Dash agreed to the trade. You know, it's like Twilight said in the beginning, you know, no trade occurs unless both ponies agree that it's fair, which is why there's never been a dispute. Changing your mind afterwards, i.e. buyer's remorse, does not count. It was nice to see that Twilight actually stuck with the rules of the trade and showed her impartiality instead of automatically siding with Rainbow Dash just because they're friends. You know, I almost thought Fluttershy would keep the two-headed Orthos. I think that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. But she couldn't. She was technically Rainbow Dash's because Rainbow Dash made all the trades. Well, that's not saying that Rainbow Dash couldn't give her the Orthos outside of the fair. Yeah, but Fluttershy does not need another pet. Rarity's Applejack's arc almost felt like a Magi's tale to me. You know, at the very end, how they traded their stuff off to get the other person something like they wanted. It was nice of Rainbow Dash to make sure that Fluttershy got her bird whistle since it was mostly Rainbow Dash's fault that she lost the bear call and also that she didn't have time to trade the bear call for anything else. And it was nice for Twilight to give Rainbow Dash a copy of the Daring Do book, but number one, Twilight has the entire series. Why would a copy of that been in the books that she was trying to trade off? Because I expect that she's the type of pony who would have reread the series. Secondly, Rainbow Dash has to have at least one copy of the first book because there's a difference between having the readable copies and having the collector's copies. Though if she's trying to assemble an entire collector's set, it's a reasonable assumption that she has a basic set already because she's a huge Daring Do fan. Which reminds me of a fact I wanted to bring up earlier but I forgot to. Rainbow Dash knows Daring Do. Can't she just go and get a first edition from her and have it signed? Well, she could go and get it signed, but it doesn't mean that there's that many first editions around. We don't know how limited a printing is in Equestria. Look at the level of technology. You know, a first printing. So it would have likely been R.K. Yearling's first novel. So the first printing may not have been very large. And how many years ago? How many were defaced, damaged, got lost? Yeah, but R.K. Yearling probably does have her own, if not more than one, copy of the first edition. They always send authors copies of their own. Yeah, but going and asking her for it would be presuming on their friendship. You know, R.K. Yearling already did her a favor of sending her a copy of the new book before any pony else got it. And also 
made the writing accurate by actually including Rainbow Dash, where Daring Do has always worked alone in the past. And I think it would have been fun to see more of what other ponies were trading, not just in the background, but to hear some of the bargains, you know, and if we'd see anything where it seemed really uneven, other than Applejack and Rarity trading all of their stuff for a single item. <laughs> yeah, five seconds quicker. Really, Applejack? Really? Can't you just ask Twilight to make a tin like that? Probably. And also, is it. Did the tin look like that because it's stained or because it's rusted? Because if it's stained, that's okay. You know, bakeware gets stained after a while. Even if you scrub it really well, it can happen. But if it's rusty, you don't want to cook in something that's rusty. The rust is going to contaminate the food. So this makes no sense. If you're buying something in order to use it, if you're buying it as a collectible, you know, the rust is part of the image, but buying it for use, you know, okay, you can use a sander and flake the rust off, but how rusted is it? You know, is this actually going to be a usable object? You know, between the two, rarities was more desirable, not because it was jewelry, but because it was functional. It was still capable of serving its function of being a brooch. Okay, yes, she had one just like it, so it was silly to get another one, but at least it was in good condition and completely capable of performing the function of being a brooch. You know, the jewels weren't damaged, the pin wasn't damaged, you know, it wasn't rusty, it was all nice and polished. I mean, we couldn't tell the difference. Uh, that I like how at the very end you see Spike making the trade and they're both holding the comic books so carefully and handing them off and touch, snatch, yay! <laughs> Yeah, that was a nice little touch. Yeah, you can actually see Spike in a lot of background shots too, going, just looking at the guy and they're discussing things. You can't tell what they're exactly talking about, but you can tell they're at least talking about comics. Mm-hmm. Which is what happens. This episode had a lot of different lessons going on. It was almost confusing in a way, but it was a nice episode. A nice, enjoyable filler. I liked it, but it could have been better. It definitely could have been better. It was nice to see them try to involve all of the main six at the time and have them on separate story arcs. You know, each set of two ponies was doing their own thing. We spent most of our time with Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, but we still had Applejack and Rarity having their own set of issues and Twilight and Pinkie Pie having their own set of issues. So it was nice in that we got to see all of the characters have some depth at the same time is in a lot of episodes that doesn't happen the focal pony seems to get all the depth and then all the friends are incredibly shallow so for an attempt to incorporate all the ponies at the same time and have valid story points and personality and conflict for each of them it was a good attempt of course it could have been better you know there's always room for improvement overall it was enjoyable Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a comment. Please be nice. If you'd like to see high-res versions of Lux's artwork, you can check him out over on DeviantArt. If you'd like to follow the progress of these episodes, check us out over on Tumblr, where there may also be some thoughts posted on other subjects. Links in the description. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 22. Trade ya.